So hi, welcome everybody. I'm Joy Vernon, and I'm the organizer for the Greater Greater Seattle Tarot Meetup. Um, and um, today we are doing a topic that I've been interested in for many years. I had a breakthrough recently. I've been trying to, I always kind of heard this idea that there was this concept of the soul being incarnated by uh, coming down through the, the planets or the celestial spheres and gaining qualities from each planet as it passed. And, um, and I always wanted to know more about that, but I couldn't figure out where the idea came from. I couldn't find like a source text. And anytime I tried to ask anybody, I'm not very good at asking people, but when I did, they're like, well, that's just what people thought back then. And I'm like, well, yeah, but who thought it? And what, what did they say about it? Um, or I would get the other answer I would get is, oh, that's in the Hermetica. I'm like, well, the Hermetica, there's a lot of the Hermetica. <laughs> Can you narrow it down for me? <laughs> um, and so, um, and I, I kept, I kept Googling it over and over again. I never knew what to Google and how to like get the get Google to tell me like source text, as opposed to somebody's like, hey, I was thinking about this the other day. And this is what I think um, on their blog or whatever. And so you've got a little bit a little combination of that you've got a little bit of me finally finding a couple source texts, and also going so this is what I think. my Empyrean key system of um, tarot. Uh, as it's a certain style of doing tarot work and tarot spreads. Um, I often use it with astrology, but it doesn't have to be done with astrology. Um, I developed that in about 2010. And I would say I knew a lot about the Ptolemaic cosmology and the, and the, and the planetary spheres and all of that kind of stuff already but um i hadn't come across really a lot of this stuff about the descent of the soul yet i then i started hearing about it every just every once in a while and then i heard it again much more recently on uh well still a long time ago though um on chris brennan's uh podcast um i'd already been doing my empyrean key thing for a really long time and working with groups and developing ongoing programs with it and things like that. But this guy mentioned it again, this idea of the soul picking up energies as it descended through the planets. And I just, you know how it is. It's just like your whole body tingles and you're like, this is what I've been trying to find. And uh, of course, uh, then I wasn't able to find it again. Um, I couldn't remember the which podcast I had listened to and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and so, um, but I realized then that of all the different ways I put together various spiritual growth programs, that was the one I really wanted to do was where the soul descends through the planetary spheres. And so um, about Two years ago, three years ago, two years ago, I'm not sure. I, I finally put together my Empyrean Way program. And that does work with astrology and Kabbalah and that idea of the descent of the soul um, and taking and how it picks up something from each planet. And of course, we, we do my Empyrean key system using each planet in the chart um, and uh working with the aspects that it makes, working with the sign and house that it's in and all that kind of stuff. We do this whole process and, um, and, and I don't want to talk too much about the Empyrean key thing, although this is part of the reason I've been working so hard on just on figuring all this stuff out because I knew I wanted to do this. Um, and I developed, I just developed my own thing. I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, we all know what the planets mean. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just going to come up with my own thing of what the planets pick up um, as they descend through the, through the spheres. And so, um, 
And then anyway, when you do the Empyrean key work, you get a symbol. That's the result of the entire process is a symbol. And you use that symbol to connect with those planetary energies whenever you want to use them. You can also use that if you're interested in self-initiation into greater spiritual connection. You can also use that symbol as part of self-initiation rituals to deepen your connection to the planetary energies and to ultimately the source of all of that, which is the divine. Um, okay, cool. So here we are. I'm going to share my screen now and um, go through the handout with you. I only have time to do one thing. I can do a slideshow or I can do a handout. And I very seldom can do both. And so this time I did a handout. Um, and so this is the Descent to the Soul, How to Create Yourself. And this is a Robert Flood image showing the, um, the anima mundi, the soul of the world, um, chained by one hand up to the divine, the Tetragrammaton yud heh vav -He, and chained by another chain down to this monkey down here that is symbolic of humanity. Um, it shows the um, the... Earth is is um, water and earth. Um, anyway, it's got seven seven levels here. Um, these these natural arts, and then the liberal arts, and then mineral, vegetable, animal, and then after those seven levels, then we get the uh, level the air and fire rings. So water and earth were down here. Then we get these seven. Um, these seven that I'm not really that sure about, but it, it comes up later. So, so I wanted to mention it. And then you get the seven spheres of the planets coming out and then the zodiac or the fixed stars out at the, and the, the, that's a weird thing. Astrologers are like zodiac or fixed stars. Which one are you talking about? There's a difference. And it's like, yeah, but we're just talking about the background that things are moving against. And since we're talking about the planets, the planets move in the zodiac. Um, so that's mostly what we're talking about is the fact that there's a background that that the planets move against. Um, so that is and that's what this just says the Chellum's uh, stellatum, which I guess is the the uh, starry heaven or something like that. Um, and so then, so here, here's a table of contents. I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about the soul, but I want to say, I'm not going to talk very much about the soul because it is very complicated, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you um, what my primary source says. Um, I'm going to point out a few parallels to Kabbalah. Uh, and then talk about both the ascent and descent of the soul, according to a couple different sources. And then I'll look, we'll look again at that Robert Flood image. Um, and I've got the descent of the soul tarot spread, which hopefully is what we're going to spend the most amount of time on today. And then I actually reproduced the one source that I actually finally found. I um, The descent of the soul from the height of cosmos to the depths of the earth by Macrobius. Um, I found that... Um, I finally found the actual text in GRS Mead's book on uh, the Hermetica or the Hermes Trismegistus or whatever his book is called. Um, so that's where I finally found it. Um, and I reproduced because that book is from 1906. I I don't think there's any kind of copyright on it. I found it online. So I just uh, reproduced that section. That's uh, that's the quote he quotes. So he's he's even quoting it from somebody else that translated it from an older source. Anyway, and whatever, <laughs> wherever it came from, I reproduced it. Um, I've got some resources for you a little bit about my Empyrean Way year-long program. And then I've got the tarot and astrology tables. And I might take a really quick look at them just, well, I'll, I'll show that I'll show you them when we get to it. That'll make the best sense. So our next topic, our first stop here is the soul. What is the soul? And um, if you've studied any kind of um, Greek uh, philosophy or anything, you're probably familiar with some basic um uh, words, there's pneuma, which is spirit, and there's psyche, which is soul, and there's noose, which is mind. Um, and that's the long and short of it. 
except that different people see the soul different ways. And so then those words get all conflated. And some people say pneuma for one thing, and some people say it for something else, and 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 so on and so forth. So I personally get confused by this. Um, and so what I ended up doing, because I didn't want to go, I didn't want to do the history of the soul because there's like, <laughs> I would never, ever be able to learn that much. Um, but I just stuck to what Macrobia says. Um, and so, and I, I was going to put this earlier in and I apparently forgot. I'm going to flip ahead a couple so that I can show you. So what we're, what I found here is Macrobius. He goes by Macrobius, but his full name is Macrobius Ambrosius Theodosius. And he wrote this commentary on a book by Cicero. And the book by Cicero is called The Dream of Scipio. And so the, so Macrobius's commentary on The Dream of Scipio included, apparently he not so much made comments on that Cicero book, but more just went off on a lot of tangents, kind of like I'm good at. <laughs> and, um, and one of the tangents that he went off on was this descent of the soul from the height of the cosmos to the depths of the earth. Um, and again, I found this exact thing reproduced uh, in Thrice Greatest Hermes, Volume One by G.R.S. Mead. Um, so that is that. That's the and that's on sacred texts. Um, and so that's the main source. So this is what Macrobius says about the soul. So he says that it originates from where the zodiac and galaxy meet. Um, and by galaxy, um, <clears throat> I. I do think that it was understood at the even at the time that he was talking about the Milky Way. Um, and I did look this up because I didn't know. I'm like, uh, can we find the galaxy in our chart? And it turns out you can. It's if you use astro.com, um, you can uh, add in that additional object section, you can add or anywhere, any other system, any other chart software you have, wherever it lets you add additional things, you can add the galactic center. And that comes up, it's about 26 or 27 degrees of Sagittarius currently. Um, and so I forget um, I think I did add it to my chart, but took it away. I took it away again because I'm like, <laughs> I don't want it there when I'm reading for clients. Um, anyway, so, but that's about where it is. Um, kind of, it, it doesn't move very fast, very far. So that's where it's been for a long time. So about 26, 27 degrees of Sagittarius is the galactic center. And of course, when you say that it's at where it is at, the zodiac at Sagittarius, then we we get this idea of this is where the zodiac and the galaxy meet. Um, so it starts, the soul starts with the shape of a sphere. And the sphere is the only divine shape, according to the thoughts at the time. But from that divine shape, it lengthens into a cone as it moves downward. So it's, it's, you know, up in the heavens, and then it lengthens into a cone. So in this, and you can see that this is somewhat being indicated over here in the Robert, in the Robert Flood illustration. And so Macrobia says that just as a point stretches into a line, or a uh, and I teach all, of, I've been teaching all of this in my tarot classes in the numerology part of my tarot classes for decades. And so it's like, oh, this is, this was actually pretty common Neoplatonic thinking at, at a certain time. Um, so just as a point, uh, you know, one becomes a line by giving a second point uh, the soul moves from one monad to two, the dyad. And so therefore the soul is indivisible, divine or immortal, and yet at the same time, divisible, human or mortal. So as the monad, as one, it's divine or immortal. 
And as two, it is divisible, therefore human or mortal. So matter, uh, which is that, that word we all love so much, hile, which is, um, uh, which is a word we use in alchemy to represent the prima materia. So matter, matter starts to flow into the body. Um, the, this, uh, the, the body of this soul, it's a soul body still, it's not a human body yet. It's a soul body, but matter starts to flow into it. And that causes it to get heavy and to start to be drawn downwards. And it's compared to intoxication. Um, and the, and even there's a little bit of a negative connotation because intoxication sometimes can be considered like this divine inebriation, but this did describe it as kind of a, a um, bringing in like a, a negativity or a, I forget the exact word that they use, I guess something that draws you away from the divine, um, and so that's that intoxication. And then the soul drinks and the, and like the intoxication that makes you forgetful, the soul drinks from the river of forgetfulness prior to an incarnation. And this is all tied together uh, with the, with the intoxication business. If the soul's remembered, and here's the proof of this, if the souls remembered what they knew in heaven, then people on earth would not disagree about the divine state. We would, if we all remembered, then we'd all agree and we'd be like, yep, that's the way it is. Um, so some people, however, drink less from the river of forgetfulness. And so they can say true things. So then the mind, and so this this is primarily discussing soul as mind. And again, there's different philosophies on this. So this is the one that's focused on here, that soul is noose, that it is expressed via the mind. Um, although some people then say that the noose is at the chest level. So that might be closer to our word for heart. Um, the mind noose starts undivided. It descends into incarnation, therefore becoming divided, and then returns after death to an undivided state. In this way, it both fulfills the duties of the cosmos and also performs the mysteries of its own nature. So the soul, because it's both mortal and immortal, because it experiences both unity and uh diversity in incarnation, it fulfills both the duties of the cosmos and performs what it needs to perform uh, of its own nature. So the soul weighted down with matter falls from that boundary of the zodiac and galaxy into the spheres of the planets. And here's where we get to the main topic. And as it descends, the soul is wrapped sequentially in the envelopes of the light of the planets. And it also in, develops from each planet an impulse, a motion that it will act on when incarnated. And I just thought that once I read all of that, I was like, uh, wait, that's pretty much Kabbalah 101, like straight, direct, uh, expression of that. There is the unity or the monad. It is the, you could even consider it the spherical aspect of the soul. It uh, starts to get weighed down. It takes a direction, which moves down to number two, hokma. Uh, and then it has matter enter it. Three, bina is associated with um uh, um, form among other things uh, this is force and this is form so this is the motion of it descending and this is the matter that enters into the soul it goes through this intoxication and forgetfulness period that would be the abyss and then it's and then it starts to descend through these planets including uh, Bina as Saturn and going down through the seven planets and then uh, from there, incarnation is considered to happen at 10 Malkut. So I thought that was very similar to Kabbalah. 
So here is the, here's a lot of the, exactly what Macrobius said about this. So ascent and descent of the soul. Macrobius in his commentary on the dream of Scipio describes the soul as descending through the seven planetary spheres and gaining qualities from each planet. Previously, prior to Macrobius, the Corpus Hermeticum in the text titled the Poimander or, or uh, Pimander uh, described what the soul lost after death as it rose if it, as it returned through the seven zones and achieved divine purity. Although at the time period, it was more common to see the descent as something negative, leaving behind celestial beauty for a brutish life, Macrobius described the uh, neutral benefits gained from each planet uh, for individuals to apply as they could and would. So, so that was something I think from what I was reading, I think that was something a little bit unique to Macrobius is that he talked about neutral benefits and just said, everybody gets these benefits, but how you use them is kind of up to you. And so here's the ascent. This is from the Corpus Hermeticum. This is from 100 to 300 common area. Note, GRS Mead says, that these seven zones, it's called zones in, in the, in the, um, in the Poimander, uh, text, um, it just says it goes through seven zones. Mead thinks that these are possibly not planetary and that they are seven zones between the earth and the, and the moon, which we saw a flood actually illustrated there with a, the two uh, heavy elements, then those seven other uh, zones, then the two light elements, then the moon and the planetary spheres. So uh, GRS Mead says that these zones are possibly not planetary at all. Uh, however, as you look over them, you'll see that they match up pretty well with the planets. So question mark there. Um, here is the descent, what the soul gains from Macrobius's commentary. And that is, he flourished in 400 common era about. So um, he obviously uh, came later, very likely was influenced by uh, this material. These are the actual Greek words in case you have a classic, a background in classics that actually lets you understand them. Unlike I, <laughs> I'm desperately trying to figure them all out. So in um, so remember, here's our descent that starts going down through Saturn and goes down through the different uh, levels. Then when it the soul ascends after death, I put them in order. I had it in a different order. And then I'm like, maybe I should put it in order by because I wanted to talk about the descent and then the idea that there was a, an ascent later. But then I was like, I should put them in order of. Uh, date. And so that's why they're in this order. So this is a coming down and this is a going up. When the soul dies and um, uh, and elevates back to divine unity, it, at the moon, it loses its energy of increase and, de and decrease. Um, and that is the energy of growth. It's the energy of um, propagation. At Mercury, and I love these, I think one of the points that GRS Mead was making was that because these are negative, he didn't, I think if I'm understanding him correctly, he didn't think that that they would align with the planets, even though the soul is losing human or earthly things and um releasing them each at this appropriate planetary level. To me, I can see that that would align the soul with its purity. But I think if I understood correctly, he was saying that that's one of the reasons these might not be planetary because um, they're all expressed as negative. So then at the level of Mercury, the soul loses its evil machinations and its cunning. At the um, And uh, when I have more than one thing, it's because I'm uh, taking from more than one um, translation, so that it, which is usually indicated by the semicolon, or when the soul passes past 
Venus or the third zone, it passes past the, the, it loses the illusion of longing, the folly of desire and the deceit of lust. Uh, when the soul passes the fourth zone, maybe the sun, maybe a lower level, it uh, loses arrogance, the desire of rule or ambition. Again, different translations. When it passes the fifth zone, the soul loses its presumption and recklessness. It loses its boldness and rashness of confidence. Uh, and those are very Mars-like things. The, these things fit the planets, but might not be. Uh, at Jupiter, at the sixth zone, it loses its evil impulses from wealth, its evil and ineffectual occasions of riches. That, again, I... The first one seems to make more sense, but I just copied some what different people said. And then at the seventh zone, the soul loses the deceit that lies in ambush or the subtle falsehood always lying in wait. Um, that having Saturn conjunct my son, <laughs> I, I don't think I suffer too much from falsehood, but somehow it resonated. <laughs> I'm like, I think I know what they're talking about. Um, so then when the, with the descent, and, and this is what Macrobius says, the soul gains when it moves past each sphere from Saturn. And he definitely 100%, he lines these up with planets. There is no doubt about this. This is what the soul gains from each planet as it descends. So from Saturn, it gains theoretical thinking, another interpretation, reasoning and understanding or reasoning and theorizing, logisticon and theoreticon. Um, from Jupiter, the soul gains practical thinking. This was the most confusing because it's practicon, which is practice, but I think they wanted, I think it was important to them that that practice be more theoretical, which is Jupiterian. Um, and so the idea of practical thinking or the power to act such as executive, executive power or the power of putting into practice um, from Mars, instead of being negative, this is nice and, and balanced. It's the spirited aspect, bold spirit, or the power of ardent vehemence. The word is thymacon, and I looked, I did look that one up, and it does, it does mean anger. Um, but remember that anger can be very motivating towards change and towards um, uh, taking charge of something, having that bold spirit. Um, from the sun, the soul gains perception and imagination. Um, and imagination is literally the word that we use for uh, the sixth sephira, which is the solar. There's two that precede the planets, so it, it all, the numbers all add up. <laughs> um, the sixth sephira is uh, to ferret. Uh, the, we call that imagination. And so, um, again, interesting connections here. So we get perception and imagination or the nature of sensing and imagining. Um, at the level of Venus, the soul gains appetite or desire. And appetite is one of the um, uh, Plato's words for the soul. And if you've followed um, um, Robert Place's work, you know that the Plato divides the soul into uh, appetite and reason, and and I'm not going to remember anything now. So he divides it into those three levels, and they're all through, like his sevenfold mystery, tarot, the sevenfold mystery, all of that stuff is all through there. Um, but appetite is what is gained from Venus, desire. It's the impulse to passion, it's the motion of desire. And then Mercury, from Mercury, the soul gains linguistic and interpretive capacity, the power of giving expression to and interpretation of feelings, interestingly. Um, that's just the word her hermeneuticon, which to me is interpretation or um, textual analysis. Um, and then from the moon, it gains just the vegetative functions like the heart, the circulation and the in the uh, breathing and things like that. It gains the power of generation, 
which is um, uh, being able to grow and to, but also to make things, the uh, generative organs or to reproduce basically. Um, it gains the nature of making bodies grow uh, and of moving them. So uh, again, a simple way of looking at that might just be, it is the moon, as you know, in, um, uh, this time period was often associated with the body itself. Uh, and so that's part of what we are talking about there, just physical functions. And so this one uh, is higher resolution so we can get in there. That what These layers were Ars Naturum Corrigens and Regno Minerali, Ars Naturum Adjuvans, Adjuvans and Regno Vegetabili, Ars Naturum Suplens in Regno Animali. And so again, I, I started to look these up and got sidetracked and I didn't write down or remember what they are. The natural art, this in the kingdom of minerals, natural art, whatever that word is in the kingdom of vegetables and the natural art, whatever that one is in the kingdom of animals. So we're still looking at those through kingdoms and the key words are three that of course I don't know. Um, anyway, so interesting stuff. If you know Latin, definitely spend some time with that and see what you can make of it. And also, if you have a better translation for this, please, by all means, let me know. So that's the main content that I had. I want to go through a tarot spread, but I'm going to stop first and um, get some comments. I will tell you that what we're going to do, oh, you need your natal chart. Um, and so if you, you don't have to have it. Um, if you do have it, that's a great. Um, so if, you, but if you want to take a minute and grab your chart and grab a tarot deck, um, that's, that's what we're going to be working with. We're basically, there's three pages that, that you can work with. Here's what Macrobius called each of the plant, said that the soul gains from each planet. This is my, uh, interpretation that's based on um, a combination of Kabbalistic and planetary symbol symbolism um, put into the terminology of the creative process. And then here's a spot for you to, to write your thoughts. So you'll need your tarot deck and then um, you'll consult your chart to find out what sign each of those planets is in. If you know this from memory, of course, you don't need the chart. Um, Here's where I can show you about the tables, because some people are going to just want to get to doing this right away. Um, here at the end, starting on page 15, we have these tarot and astrology tables. Note the title on each one. These are the planets and points. I already picked out the planets for you and showed you what cards to use. Um, then here is the aspects. We don't need that today. And then here is the signs. So this is page 18 and 19. You're going to need the signs section, page 18 and 19, to look up the cards. If you don't already know it, which some of you might, you'll need to look up the signs uh, here on pages 18 and 19 of the handout. And so I use the court cards for the signs, and I use what I call the simple version as opposed to the Golden Dawn version, where I just assign um, one sign, one court card, instead of doing the overlapping thing that the Golden Dawn does. So Aries is the Queen of Wands, Taurus is the King of Pentacles, Gemini is a Knight of Swords, and so on. If you know astrology, you'll see the pattern to that really quickly. Um, so those are the pages there. I also have the houses here. Um, but we're not going to work with the houses today. So that is the main thing. Um, the I will give you the whole spread itself can basically be found on page 10. There are ways of working through it and jotting down some things. You can find the sign keywords back on page 18 and 19. Um, 
Again, here's just a few keywords for each sign, not a lot, but if you don't know astrology very well, it'll get you started. If you do know astrology, you don't need to use my keywords at all. Um, it gives you, and then you can find your tarot court, your court card uh, for, for the sign where the planet is. So my Saturn is in Aries. Um, I would look at my chart to see that it's in Aries. I'd look up the Aries keywords um pioneering and charismatic i don't remember what i wrote um and then and then i'd write my my tarot card which is the queen of wands and then i'd say what do i think this is um and so on and so forth then on this page page 10 i think this is that's where you can kind of put it all together but I'm, I've assumed that you figured some things out and done a little bit of writing your own thoughts down. So then your planet Saturn in your sign and your card three now is a random draw. And so you would um, do a random draw there and that's going to be your soul expression. And basically, um, uh, this is all described here. Anyway, I don't want to go into, I will, will come back to this and I will go through the um, process step by step. I just know from my students that most of them don't want to wait for me to describe it. They just want to do it. So I'm giving you the heads up of what needs, what resources you have so that you can get started if you want to. I'm going to stop sharing now and um, take some questions. Is the ascent described in the first column what happens upon death? Or is the ascent also part of the problem? No, the, the ascent is what happens after death. It is definitely described that way. The soul um, released from the body, losing all the bad habits that it gained in a life of incarnation and returning uh, through these planetary spheres to um, a, a state of light and purity. Some, a lot of people like, this is another, that, thanks for mentioning that, because this is another different way that different people work with this. I told you part of it would be, this is what I discovered and learned, but part of it would be like, and this is how I do it. And I'm not doing it right. I'm not Greek. I'm not from that time period. Um, I'm not Latin or anything else. Um, I, so this is what I, and remember, I came up with most of this prior to learning this stuff. I always work backwards in my life. Um, and so um, a lot of people, especially because the, the, the Poimanders or the divine Pymander is Ooh. such a well-known um, piece from the Hermeticum. A lot of people really are like, I need to lose all of these things from my soul so that I can be incarnated, but have a purer soul. Um, and so that's definitely one way of looking at it and probably the way most people look at it. Because I finally found this microbial stuff and what the soul gains on descent, that to me for better or for worse, is what was of interest to me. I really want to say my soul gained some really important things. And I think I'm one of those people, the Stoics and a lot of the, uh, the, the, the philosophers from this time period were really a little bit more body is bad, incarnation is bad, earth is bad. Um, and that super simplifies it possibly in an insulting way. And I don't mean to be insulting. I just mean to, to, say why the philosophy of the time also tended to suggest that the less we could be incarnated and the more we could be just a pure soul that would be better and um but i don't tend to see things that way i'm a little bit more of a integrate integrate things type of philosopher and so um I think what is the best expression of my soul that I can have and how can I incarnate that into my life? And so that's what my process is about. And what I want to discover with this tarot spread today is, you know, here is a card for the planet. This, the, the, um, the sign that it's in is how the soul wants to use what it's given. So if my, um, 
theoretical thinking from Saturn is in Aries, I want to use theoretical thinking to, I don't know, what's a good Aries word, pioneer new things, like what I'm doing right now. So, um, so that's just kind of an example uh, of how this tarot spread works. And then the third card would be a random draw. And it's like, okay, now that I see what my chart is telling me about this quality of my soul, what can I really do to get it out there? What can I really do to, um, to, to embody this and incarnate it? Um, let me go back to questions. Where is the mapping of astrological elements to card coming from, please? That is from the Golden Dawn. Um, I think I'm pretty strict with it, except for the court cards where I, I do that simple uh, version. But that that's a Golden Dawn. It is the most common, although um, more and more I see uh, there are absolutely, without a doubt, there are variations. But I think that one's the most common. The astrological correspondences in the Golden Dawn are based on the Hebrew letters. And I've done talks on that. And I'm not sure if they're currently available on the Internet now or not, to be honest. Does anybody... This is one thing that I would like to know if anybody has studied this before. I had come across, finally, I came across Macrobius, but I am curious if anybody knows of any other sources for this material um, besides the ones I mentioned. Somebody else says here, I recently got a book by Marlene Seven Bremner called Hermetic Philosophy and Creative Alchemy. She has a big section on the journey through the spheres, and she rigorously references her text. Awesome. Although I haven't read through that section yet, um, I can only see her reference uh, Macrobius. Okay, interesting. Um, so I will definitely check that one out for without a doubt. Hermetic philosophy and creative alchemy. Yay, thank you for that. Yes, <laughs> that is awesome. Um, I did want to, before I closed, I did want to share about my uh, program that I mentioned, the Empyrean Way. Um, and one of the, like I said, I had, I had this yearning for a long time. And then when I was reminded listening to Chris's podcast and I was reminded again about the idea of that soul descending through the seven planets as soon as I heard that I said that is absolutely positively the primary way I want to work with my Empyrean key materials and I want to be able to take people down through the planets so that they can uncover their soul and so when we do this, and so some of you that are um, more knowledgeable about your chart already figured out exactly what we do. Um, I do work with, um, you know, conjunctions or aspects or, or in the house houses and things like that. Um, and so we go through the seven planets. We actually do a little bit more because we actually follow the 10 Sephirot on the tree of life, but that includes the seven planets. Um, the whole idea is to create yourself um we'll unpack each planet it and it's a year-long program uh there's a lot of uh there's some introductory material then there's the main thrust of the program which goes uh through the 10 sephirot of the tree of life uh doing these spreads bigger spreads than what you've done here um doing spreads for each of the sephirot and um, getting these symbols and doing all of this. And I give a lot of ideas on how to work with the symbols and ritual work and, um, and other meditative work and things like that. Um, and uh, uh, I've got a new uh, program forming now. It starts in October of this year. Um, so I just wanted to direct you to that. I guess I can put the link. I didn't even put a link in the handout. That's how bad I am at marketing myself. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, Dawn. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm wondering if you, hmm, I mean, there's a very specific, obviously order of planets. Um, it's almost linear, but I'm thinking not linear. I'm wondering if you, for yourself, in visual, envision this process of descending uh, down through these layers as as this linear experience of the soul incarnating. That's a really good question. Um, 
and of course I'm going to say yes and no. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I do in that. Um, one of the things that, that Macrobius talks about and that's also taught in Kabbalah um, is the idea of putting on each planet, like in the, I said before, like an envelope or an envelope of light or something. But one uh, one f interpretation that's given is putting on each planet like a garment. Um, and I even like that because it is similar to Inanna and her descent into the underworld where she basically is dying and she has to remove seven garments. And so it's like, hmm, that's very interesting. So, so putting on these garments as the soul descends into incarnation. And again, the garments tend to dim slightly the light um, of the pure soul. But at the same time, just like you get dressed, you can wear garments that dim your light like putting on a, a uniform that's like, I'm just like everybody else versus dressing really uniquely and to express your own style. I mean, it's it's a metaphor, obviously. It's not exactly related to the soul, but, but it is a way of expressing that. Um, and so I do think that those garments work in a certain manner. I do think that the... Um, uh, and are certain and are layered. And I do think that those layers have to go in that order. Um, on the other hand, the gar like again, to follow through on a garment metaphor, um, you know, sometimes a garment, an overgarment is actually see through, or an overgarment has. Uh, holes in it or something that's designed to let you see things that are underneath it. Um, and so, so it doesn't mean that, that everything below is necessarily lost. Um, it's, it's that, it's that login look, <laughs> but you can see all the different layers and they work together in a really, in a really cool fashion. At least that's, I, I love that look. So, um, and um and that can include, according to the anonymous, that it can include certain things are more decorative, you know, maybe, maybe Venus is more decorative, maybe the moon is more decorative. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. How, how do you see it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I actually thought this might be like an Anana story. Uh, although, as you say, it's it's sort of like the mirror opposite of it, right? That uh, and then uh, um, taking off so that she's totally vulnerable when she reaches the depths, whereas we, in this sense, are you know how how do we say this? We lose our vulnerability because we cover it up, you know, like, and we have to rediscover it maybe. Yeah, um, I think this whole tarot reading is, for me, a way of rediscovering that that vulnerability if I'm willing to go that far. You know, it's a. I think tarot doesn't lie. You know, but but I have to be ready to hear it. Well, in the beginning, the very beginning of the Anana story, she gets dressed and she puts on everything, mm. and so I think that that's part of it is um you know clothes are so i mean i just grab i like literally try to grab clothes that match the color of my slideshow <laughs> and so or that that match the planetary day <laughs> the planetary energy of the day um and so um but most people have a little bit more of a style. Um, and so, and I have, I still have a style. Everybody has a style, but I think, I think that there is, it's a metaphor, but I do think that there's a lot of value to it. 
um, of, of, you know, when you want to get dressed to be yourself, what does that mean? And there might be fewer clothes involved, <laughs> or there might be more clothes involved, but it's that expression that it's like how, like, Inanna needed to kind of like she's queen of heaven and so she's putting on queen clothes to go down there to confront her sister or to uh, greet her sister um and so um you know and we you know we have our work clothes and our going out on friday night with our friends clothes and we have our you know gardening and staying at home clothes and you know and we have all the different variety of things but when i think there's that idea of of um i think part of maybe this is a weird metaphor maybe part maybe part of being in car like being dying and having our soul pure and bright fabulous great like that's something to look forward to but while we are incarnated we might as well and we have the the clothes on that our soul had to take on we might as make well make sure that we're looking our best in it i guess that's where i'm i'm trying to come from <laughs> And trying to use this as a metaphor. It's just like, how do you feel, look, express the thing that is most you, that is most expressive of your personality, um, that that really reveals the truth about who you are and lets that soul shine as brightly as possible, even in an incarnated body? I was, I want to create an outfit from all those random card pulls in the spread. Oh my God. Brilliant. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, um, um, going away from the clothing thing, um, <laughs> that, um, the first planet that starts this whole process, I, I find it so interesting that it's Saturn, you know, that the density is what takes that ball and moves it into a cone, you know, like how else could we start that process of going down? And, uh, and then each level, I'm trying to get wrap my head around the, the logistics of it, you know, the, the linear progression that is just so, I mean, it's, I have to think about this. This is very interesting, you know, going from Saturn to just start this whole process into Jupiter of it, wants to uh kind of like that higher level of um governance you know like it's not just about generosity but it's about being in governance of myself as i descend wow that's so amazing yeah 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 mm, thank you thank you yeah absolutely absolutely and i love this stuff and the the planetary order is related to so many um philosophies and alchemy pulls a lot from that too and so they do start alchemy does start with saturn and then goes to jupiter um and um and so there are you know there are phases and uh orders and um kind of methods uh, um of working towards a sense of purification um and it's a different it's a different philosophy i don't want to get into it because it is different um but we've been doing that on our first saturday meetups for the last uh year for this full year most of those videos all of those videos are up on my youtube um in terms of alchemy and tarot but yeah it's i mean this stuff there's <laughs> it's um it's good stuff it's important stuff yeah it's deep thank you thanks everybody for coming um i'm really glad to have a great group today and glad to have you all uh, sound like you got something from this and that you um hopefully that you're continuing on with the tarot spread and working through it um so uh Thanks again and keep keep an eye out on the meetup for uh, more cool things. <laughs> <laughs>